And then I think a newer element that, that has emerged, particularly in the last two years, is this question of the China model. We used to, in the West, always talk about, well, is there there's a China model or other countries following the China model? Well, the Chinese got, they didn't really talk about it. And then at the 19th Party Congress, Xi Jinping comes out and is like, yeah, we're going to be the model. And we're going to show other developing countries, you know, to a, a way of governing. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's framed in this kind of CCP speak that sounds very un innocuous. But it basically is how their governance system could work elsewhere. And so I think you do get a more proactive narrative of also trying to relay to people in other countries, and in some cases very practical with like the export of surveillance technologies and things like that, of, of transporting the China model uh, to other countries. And for the media influence sphere, there are really, I would say, three main ways in which it plays out. One is this element of the propaganda side. The, the insinuating, especially Chinese state media content and narratives, even through other, um, other actors, uh, into uh, the media space. Some of it is direct, a lot of it's indirect, like with by paid supplements, by um, uh, other ways in which they actually call, have a term called borrowing the boat to reach the sea, where basically they're essentially ins inserting, because how many people are really going to go pick up a copy of the China Daily, right? But there are a lot more Americans, not only in America, it's in Australia, it's in the UK, it's in Kenya, it's in Argentina, it's in Peru, it's in Senegal, uh, are picking up their newspaper and there they see the China Watch supplement that doesn't necessarily, it says it's an advertorial supplement, but not most times it doesn't, it might say it's from China, it definitely doesn't say that it's a state-owned newspaper. Um, so that's one thing, is this element of kind of propagandizing and inserting the narrative. And that you could say, well, that's soft power, right? I mean, that we do, everybody does. I think the tricky thing is this lack of transparency, where it's not made clear what the origins are and the state uh, motivations are behind it. The second type is more problematic, which is the suppressive of, suppression of critical coverage. And that, I wrote a report called The Long Shadow of Chinese Censorship that has a pretty detailed analysis of all the different tools in the toolbox for this. Um, but it ranges from various forms of direct action, like Chinese diplomats and embassy officials actually going to media owners, to journalists, to others outside of China and telling them, threatening them, intimidating them, actually cable company executives that's happened in the United States, so that they wouldn't uh, give a dissident Chinese TV station, get them on the air um, in, in the Washington, D.C. area. So those types of efforts that are really direct um, to try to pressure various people outside of China uh, to change their coverage of China and their work on China. A second is the whole issue of economic carrots and sticks. Um, and that's various means of co-opting and, and using particularly media owners who have business interests in China, either getting them to buy certain media outlets like's happened in Taiwan, or uh, suppress some of the coverage uh, critical coverage in the media outlets they already own. Um, a third is working through proxies, so putting pressure on governments, satellite companies, and others, advertisers, in order to suppress critical coverage and make the financial sustainability of critical news outlets more difficult. And then the last is various forms of cyber attacks and physical attacks. Now the last point I'll just make quickly is, I think there's a new form in which the Chinese government and, com and, and Communist Party and, and related companies are increasingly in a place where they can influence the narratives in democracies, and that relates to content management and delivery systems. So you have a situation where, in many parts of Africa, a Chinese company that is privately owned, but has received subsidies from the Chinese government, and has various, clearly a close relationship called Star Times, has really overseen the transition from analog to digital television uh, in multiple countries. And lo and behold, after a while, it comes out that, you know what? Their cheapest package now no longer includes BBC World. Their cheapest package now only includes CGTN, the Chinese state media, the, the international arm of the Chinese state media broadcaster, um, and local channels. And then you have other examples like this um, of, again, various ways in which key nodes in the information flow in other countries may be coming under control, and maybe they're not being activated now. But I think one of the challenges is to look at that arena and to see how they could be in the future, perhaps. Mm -hmm.